Uh, this is the first in our series on in art education. And um, we are so happy to have Phil Levine, New York artist, uh, to do this demonstration for us. We're going to start at 10.30, 10 10.35. <laughs> and start oh. with 12. Yeah. And um, this event is very generously sponsored by the Fairfax City Commission on the Arts. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Please take it away. Thank you, Padma. Okay. So we're talking about uh, painting using photographs, reference. And I've been trying this for so many years. I started out, I don't know if you know what a little eye loop is, those little things you look through like this at the close in objects. Uh, well, in the old days before the digital camera, I would get a slide and tape it onto the back of the eye loop and look through like this while I'm trying to paint. Well, thankfully we have digital camera. I mean, that's crazy, but it worked. Now we have digital cameras and now I take um, eight by 10 images and print them out. It's, it's great, really. So what I looked at, when I, I did a whole series of paintings of Greenwich Village. I just finished them, the daytime scenes. Now I'm just starting um, a series of night scenes and that's what I'm gonna do here, try one. I've only done three of them so far, so we'll see what happens. One hour is certainly not gonna be enough to finish it, but at least get a start. But I just wanted to show you some of the pictures, things that I look for when I'm painting people and I wanna put people in the paintings which I almost invariably do like 95% of the time. But these are some of the some of the ones I find in the street that I love. Uh, they have light on them a certain way. Um, and I'll, I might use these. And I like this guy. I haven't used him yet, but I'm going to. So he won't mind. Um, here's a couple restaurants. I actually painted them already. Um, like this. This I had to include her in a painting. So anyway, the uh, point is, which is, there's a guy running in front of Manley's liquor store. Uh, um, I mean, look at that, the light is perfect on him, the, the, everything. Um, that, that was that. And this, okay. and then, oh, this one. And it's, I'm looking for figures, but I'm not, oh, I'm not necessarily painting them where they are. I might have to, they don't make, I might have to take a figure, one of these figures, and move it over to a composition that I found that I also photographed. Um, not quite sure I have to move. No, anyway. Okay. So I'll move, a, I'll take a figure from one place, move it to a different composition, as long as two things are there. The light is the same, which it's easy to make that mistake of, well, the light's coming in from the right of the figure, but it's coming in on the left from the scene, doesn't work. So, and then the second part of that is the scale of the figure. The figure has to, because this figure is not part of that composition with the other in the photo, I have to resize the figure so it fits. So that thing, so that figure does not bump its head when it walks through the door, that kind of thing. And yet, there have been some artists who have gotten away with uh, distorting uh, proportions. Uh, Edward Hopper is a great example. Rembrandt did it as well. But Hopper did it in some of his scenes where you see a woman on a bed, sitting on a bed, and then you say, and if you look closer, you go, if that woman lie down on that bed, she'd be like four feet too long, or the bed would be four feet too short. And he got away with it because he's Edward Hopper and it probably sold for millions. So, uh, so much for rules anyway. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a night nice scene that I photographed, this one, and I'm gonna take part of this. It's um, right around the corner for me, actually. Um, and I'm gonna take part of it. Then I have these two figures I've taken elsewhere at night, and I love them. They're simple, uh, the light is on them in the right way. It's got a dog. So what I might try to do uh, is put both of them in this composition and then work through it. And I want to say it from the beginning, so much of this is about corrections, all the time correcting. Putting it down the first time, never right. The figure, I mean, 
it's I sometimes have to go over and over and over and redo. The good thing about oil paint is you take a rag, little paint it in your right rub out what you just did and put put it in the right way. And so I've learned that over the years to be patient and make sure I get it done right. So we're gonna start and um probably first is what I want to show you is I want to show you my palette looks like, and then bring this uh, thing back. This is, um, so this is, um, I put a lot of paint out, as you can see, because um, I like to use a lot of paint. Send you that information later, it's not really important for this demonstration. But I would take a brush and then I would take a little white paint, put a little yellow over in, and a little violet in, just to get a, and then put a lot of paint in on it. Cancel or something like that. If it really can avoid me, then I'll start drawing out the composition. So in this case, what I want to do, I don't want to do the whole thing, I'm thinking about doing maybe. Um, Yes. Maybe like this. So I kind of uh, already um, marked it off to kind of more or less equal the size of the canvas, which is 30 by 24, which is a very a common size I really like. Usually I go 30 by 24 or 30 by 40. Um, when I'm feeling more confident, I go 30 by 40. Anyway, so what I'll do. Oh, Phil, 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 when you are turned away, we cannot hear you at all, Phil. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So what I was saying is that um, I just cut off, you know, I set up this as the composition to match the 30 by 40 format of the canvas. And now I'm going to just brush it in just with a couple of loose lines to indicate what things are. This is a door. That one there is going to be this door here. So that's important to set that up. Because where I put the figures be in relation to the door. Okay. Just like setting up, just putting down some lines to indicate where things are. And now I'm going to leave that for now. I always like to keep the figure one step ahead of the rest of the painting. And then within the figure, the head one step ahead, one step ahead of the rest of the figures. Awesome. So I'm going to take these two guys. I'm going to just see where I, see where I want to put them. I don't really know yet. I haven't done this. I thought I would do a whole new painting with you rather than do one that I've already finished because I feel that would be cheating. This way you could see the struggle that I have with every painting because every painting is a struggle basically. Rarely do the paintings just come off the end of the brush. When they do, you love it. Oh man, you love it. But then the rest of the time it's a lot of hard work and corrections and stuff. Anyway. This figure, I like him a lot. I'm going to put him over here for now. Oh, remember, so I want, to, I want to make sure that he could actually walk through that door. I don't want to make it too big. So I see a limit of his size, like here. Thank you. 
see that it's going to come down too far down here. What that going to come below this? Cheating. I'm gonna lower this to make sure I can get it in there. And then um as well. I want it, I want his feet to be close to the uh leaning against leaning against the building kind of. So we have this the field here, and then it is placed in this kind of like this. Now, the relationship between the figure and the door is a little more accurate. Otherwise, he was going to be, he's going to come down low, or his head's going to be too high. It was just an indication. Then I might, I might take the other guy, just for the heck of it. I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm definitely going to work on this painting um, this week at the Art Students League. So I'll see, I'll see what I want to do to make changes once I get it down there. But this figure, Be lower, I don't care. Be forward. And that might be nice if he's if he's a little forward and this guy is a little back, it adds a little more tension, maybe a good idea. But with him, I want to get to do again too. I don't want to, I love dogs, so certainly don't want to finish them by not painting them in, you know. Is it's very hard to see his um, details with the dogs because it's, it's dark and it is dark outside, but the white and will help later. It'll be the same level as the guy's feet, of course. So going back to this guy, uh, him. And is in his pocket. You really can't see where he's dark. And just to kind of indicate where they are. Then I would go back into the um, actual composition. And the thing with this, of course, is the light, the main light source is coming from inside the building, other than usually the work that I do on the streets. Uh, the street scene is the light comes from the sun, uh, which is dramatic. And this is a whole different way of lighting, uh, working with lighting, of course. And, and it's I'm finding it challenging, but I'm really kind of loving it. Yes. Take a bigger brush this time. Uh, everything else around the light is going to be darker, of course. And this, this light in the street, although I don't have much street going on here, I have some. So I'm just going to um, outline the light by the dark. I'll just use some, I don't know, I might use green, some red, just to get it dark. If green and red just get a dog of some kind. You know, I also I use black. It's not a color. Well, nonsense. Of course you can. Black is actually beautiful 
when mixed with every other color. It is a great, it's electric, it's vibrant. I mix it with orange, red, with yellow, with green, with blue, depending on what, I, what I'm playing around with. Sometimes you get a certain kind of dark or a certain kind of feeling. I have no hesitancy in using black. I just, I really, because I've spent a long time studying color and doing color charts, I kind of sense, kind of sense intuitively what colors are going to do what to me. On the palette, and I'll keep it really loose and uh, loose and uh, loose and was it thin? The first layer is loose and thin, so changes can be made easy. Yeah, interestingly enough, the lights on this side of the space here. So I would change things. I make make sure this is darker here, so the lights stand out. Anyway. This evil is what it is. I've never used it before, and I'll never use it again. But right now, I don't like to waste. I don't like to waste a lot of time covering the canvas. Even if I have to make changes. Even if I have to make changes as I go along, or even later the next day. Different black, dark color, different colors. I don't care. Anything that's dark will work for me. I'm, I'm racketing off the light from the window. Open the door. Then for the street, this being the, uh, the sidewalk, you know, this this green here is a little bit lighter than this. These are And the same thing with the sidewalk here. This is also a little bit lighter than both of them because there is light on the the sidewalk. Then out here, same thing. And of course, the white stripes. If I had enough room, I would put them in, and they, they really help. Uh, drama, uh, variety. Like, do the sidewalk. Actually, the Even the light alone, I'm not touching that light in the can on the canvas. Um, that's going to be the light coming through. I'll mess with that a little later. I see uh, what value and color works best. For the sidewalk, and let me see. I, I like some violet and orange. Why? Because I feel like no. I'm trying to remind myself not to try to finish the painting here. That's not going to happen. But if you want to. Also, these models here. Already, already, see the composition has changed already. I wanted to have more space down here, but I don't have that. 
because of where I put the figure. What I might do later uh, during the week is actually redo the figure, make them smaller and put them toward the back. Matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Why wait any longer? So I'm going to do what I said. This is a great tool to have. Little paint thinner. He's gone. Got to, got to get him back. This time I might get the outline stronger. I like using dark lines someplace to outline. I mean, to outline people or objects sometimes. Van Gogh did it. If he could do it, I could do it. Interesting enough, this is a really nice tool. Uh, compass, right? That's what it's called. I use this for figures. It's great. Like an example, you see here. This is measuring out his head. I go down here and the third and the fourth. And using this, you don't have to study that. Studying that is great if you have the time to do it. If you don't, there's just a couple of simple things to do. This is one of them. And I depend on this sometimes. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it now, I'm gonna try to do it by eye, but um, a great tool for anatomy and perspective is this. So I might, um, in this case, see, okay, the side of his face comes down to where on his foot, or this elbow comes out, or beyond his foot. Those kinds of things, uh, the angle of the shoulder, the angles back and forth, up and down, back and forth is so incredibly helpful. I use it all the time, all the time. Anyway, let me get him back in here. What, what I like to do is like going by feel. For example, I'll put my brush here by his head while I'm looking at it's hard to explain the uh, uh, you want to look at the photograph I'll bring this down and say, okay, this, this is where the double wings. I'm explaining that. Here, elbow. Okay. Now he's a little bit shorter, and I like that better. In that case, Triangle will be here now. This guy, I might change him. I might change him. I might, this guy have to go. I might leave him out for another painting. I don't know yet. I'm not going to know until, until tomorrow. Anyway, so let me get back to the um, screen. Now that I got, now that I have some screen to show, I always see violet in the screen there. I don't want to use some of the same formulas I do. Painting a head, I, I might use the same mixture for the sh for the shadow that I mix for every shadow of every head, and the same mixture for the light, and it's kind of a formula. And I don't mind that. I mean, sometimes I'll add other colors into it just for the from variety. But I want to keep it kind of simple. This paint that I get is called platinum violet. These paints are made in corking tubes. Yes, corking tubes. 
The only paint manufacturer who does that in, in the world, as far as I know, they're out in California, and I buy them in, in uh, Colton, too. Called Trico, T R I C O A T, Trico. Anyway, I don't get anything from the country that I agree with. I love line. I love line somewhere. I'm going to redraw. Redrawing is always what I do. Make sure you know, uh, just redrawing out. Now, here. Here and I can see it was it was like this. Um, by the way, the canvas I like is not this. It's called Blue Label by Fredericks. It's a smooth, uh, smooth uh, portrait surface, really. And it's, the beauty of it is the paint does not soak in. It stays on the surface. You don't have to. It's not a struggle um, with the canvas like this is. Is something that I really like using. That other, that other. They don't sell it in the stores, Dick Blick stores, uh, only it's all, only available online. Kind of set up really like this, and so what I'm going to do now is um, try to put uh, this brush over here. I don't, I don't usually use a lot of. I'm, I'm like a low brush person. I only do a painting with three or four brushes. I keep cleaning them. It's just my habit. We'll have our habits. These are mine. So I'm on this glass palette, because I have a razor knife. Makes it a joy to use. Cleans the palette. Boom, you're ready for the next. So here, I'm going to, um, the light is going to be too bright, um, but it's, it's kind of, I mean, you look at this, it's subdued, I mean, the light coming out is subdued. Not even though this might be a little bit better. I might find it like that later. But I'm, I'm just going to try to put in a general tone there. It looks to me that it's a so I'll, I'll start with that. And what I'm trying to do is just get the values more or less that work together. Um, again, it's going to be a lot of adjustments later on during the week. Um, so, I mean, it's the end of this week, I can send you what the finished painting looks like. Mm -hmm. 
probably pretty a little violent too because there is violent in the street. And it's nice to uh, repeat that color in different places. Miles. I might even, in this painting, I might even change this. Move this, move this over here and down. So um, the light from the window goes against the dark on the side of the figure. That would look more dramatic, for sure. I don't ask, actually, it's not even necessary. Uh, maybe I might do that later. So um, at this point, I think I'm going to work on the figure a little bit more. Work on the figure a little bit more. And probably start with the head. I can do this. I'm going to take a tone. To be, I'm going to start with taking a tone for the shadow side of the face. And then a tone to the side here. His light on his shoulder. Those are little important touches. The rest of it's So I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the head. And my mixture of choice is a green. And a red to get the gray, and I can vary the amount of green, vary the amount of red. I might put in some uh, aquadone in there to jazz it up. Well, I don't know, something, any anything that I feel like. Yes, let's see. Let's see about this. More the green in that in his head on the shadow side. And I will do his hair. His hair kind of loosely here. Here's kind of blonde. Uh, 
Then, so much of it is dark. I think green. I'm using green and green and burnt sienna for his shirt. in now. His pants, I'm guessing, well, blue jeans, I guess. I like phthalo blue. Uh, I, I have phthalo blue and phthalo green on my palette because I like the intensity that they give. Just loosely getting them in there, and I see right away changes I need to make. I need to um, make changes to his head. So I would have no problem with doing that. It'd be so tempting sometimes to leave something and not correct it. Definitely is. It really got into that I wanted recently. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. He's the only one who would care anyway. So, um, let's see where his other leg is. I assume it's. Thank you. 
And his, his hair. His hair. And kind of. Was it eye, uh, eyeglasses? I think they are. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we spend time, what time on this? Is this the other guy? He's a good figure. Maybe he'll be further back. He might be able to pull that one He's here. He's here. The same thing again. His feet are too long. The, I mean, no, the figure is too long to be standing against the wall. So there's a number of things I can do. That keeps happening. The figure too small because it's not interesting enough. There's not enough I can put into a small figure. Um, it's just too inconsequential. I would move other things around. I would move the building around. So the thing is, I'm trying to be larger, I'm trying to be larger than what I had in mind. So I'm going to go with that. Meet them. They won't meet the building. Meet them.
Now I'll have to make the street starting off the line two. It's called going with the flow. Even if, if it's not the flow you want it. Let's do the side work out first here. Then the street will start down here. These, these colors are just throwing in now. Things are. So to me, it's not what I wanted originally. It's not what I wanted originally, but it's what the painting is asking for. So I can argue with the painting and keep forcing my own will on it, or I can um, let the painting determine. This guy is A uh, strong line around there. I like these strong lines. Unfortunately, I can't see the top of his head in the photograph. I missed it, but I, I kind of know where heads look like. So you get Now, try to put the dog in. Don't even know the dog's name. He is. But interestingly enough, what I like which helps this particular composition is the leash, the bright, the bright red leash. Oh, thank you. I don't see light on his head. I don't see it, but I'm going to put it there anyway.
this guy is uh, a little light on his shoulders, so I'm going to take the same color mixed here, which was uh, phthalo green and burnt sienna, and I'm going to make a lighter mixture of it, but probably throw in some kind of little lights um, to change it around. And work on the light of the windows, just to block them in a little more thoroughly. I'll take a big glob of white. Big glob of white? Well, it's the beginning of a big glob. But I had pink in Oh, one thing, one thing to try to get the exact value of uh, relationship in there. Uh, but there's something, uh, what, what really works best for you. Um, actually, that light could be a little darker in here, possibly. You have to squint at it and see. Uh, I meant to draw a light. Uh, Phil, you're breaking up a lot, Phil. Yeah? Uh, because when you go farther away from the computer, we can't hear you. Okay. Um, so we're trying to uh, figure out what the light's going to be. Is it going to, do I have to darken the area around the light or light the area of the light itself, relation to the dark? But they're related. So let's see.
I want to reestablish reestablish the docks around there, uh, around the uh, on the building. That's what I'm going to do now. Oh, I think I need to darken everything on the top. Mm -hmm. um, was that really, really all the action is taking place below there. And I'm, I know I'm going to have to readjust the light inside there and uh, draw some indications of things going on inside the building, obviously. Um, I need better with a little blue in that light. Is too pink inside. So what I'm going to do um, is 10 30, it's 10 30 now, so we don't have all that time uh, to work on it, but. So, oh, Phil, again, I, 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 I muted you. Please unmute. Better? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, sorry. All right, so a little bit of paint thinner on the rag again. Mm -hmm. Now, please go ahead and unmute yourselves and uh, 
If you have any right. questions, I'm saying to everybody, please unmute yourselves. And if you have any questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interestingly enough, more standing close to this, it actually looks better um, with with almost just a white canvas showing through, but it needs to be a color of some kind. Did I hear something? No, no, no. Sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> What I might do, I might add uh, some of the stripes in the street, even though maybe not the ones they have there. Well, maybe, see. Have you ever had, I mean, uh, when you do a painting, Phil, when as soon as you do it, it looks so bright and wonderful, right? And then a couple of a uh, week later, the colors fade away. Have, has that happened? Well, it doesn't happen very often. If it does happen, I just put some varnish on. Uh -huh. Retouch varnish, you could um, brush it on real lightly, even mix it with some uh, turp, some paint, some good paint thinner. I mean, not hardware paint thinner, but like Gamsol or one of those. And just a little bit, and it brings the color back out again. Okay. It just, it just, boom, it just lightens it up in most cases, yes. Right. right. Oh, here I am. Right. right. When I bring this back to um, the studio uh, Monday, mm. of course, I'm going to redo, redraw, redo. And I think I'm going to take that figure out. And redo. I don't think I need him. I think one figure I'm finding, even though it's not ordinarily what I want to do, I may actually wind up moving him again. Look at it again. And the economy of the studio is when you can make those decisions. Okay, do I want this figure here? Is this the right place? Uh, do I want to move him somewhere else? Do I want to add another figure? All those things will come into play. And so I'll take it really pretty much from the beginning. I'll leave the. Uh, this guy here. Him for another painting, or or what about the other guy? I'm not sure. I have to check that out Monday when I get back. I'm anxious to get going again on it. I'm just trying to show an idea of how I started painting, and you know, it's going to be a couple of hours, three or four hours, where I, where I really need to work on meticulously, and carefully, and and re redo things and re re establish things and move things around. That's the process of painting. Rarely does a painting ever come out the right way the first time. Um, sometimes it does. Sometimes, really, it's amazing it works out that way. But because uh, these are these are my gloves, I don't. I wouldn't paint with them. I've used the same gloves for like a week, as you can see. 
Mm-hmm. They get really nice, nice and aged, like it, like old wine. You know, they're really great. They fit great. Love them. Uh, so that's it. That's it. Okay. Any questions? Anything? Process? Um. I mean, do you ever? I mean, I, I had this question. Now, when you take a picture, uh, does the subject know they're being photographed? Oh no. <laughs> you yeah, nope. I don't want them posing. I want them to catch them like I show you those. These are these are these are ones by the way I took with my phone. Mm-hmm. I have a Samsung Galaxy S20, which is mm-hmm. look, I mean great images. And it prints out the 16 by 20. And I've used all of them. I've used all of these paintings. I just I mean they can't they can't pose. Um I um, doing what they're doing. Mm. I, can't, I can't improve on that, really. Yeah. I'm trying to find a place to put her. I don't know where. Um, this guy I have already. Oh, I mean, I love this. Lovely yes. <laughs> this is it's so much fun now that we have digital cameras and. I don't have to worry about how much film costs. Uh, I'm, so, you know, I can take as many shots as I want and just delete the ones that don't work mm-hmm. and then print out the ones that do and then try to create compositions around them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Any other I, question? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I would like to know that what size of uh, brush do you use? Well, I have um, different sizes for the big for the big areas. Oh, thank you. And the oats and the oats. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I started it and I couldn't because this was going to be on for forty-eight minutes, and I said I'll let it cook. I couldn't put them in the same I didn't spot, call you down yeah. and ask. I just. Oh, Jenny, Jenny is answering a question. Okay. Yeah. No. This is a fourteen. It wasn't worth asking. I want to ask you something. I can't do it. I can find it. Sure. No, I was going to do it, but thank you. Thank you. So uh, the 14 is the biggest one I generally use. Um, right. Biggest one I have, I think. And this for the bigger areas, just to brush them in. Yes. And then and I go, go all the way down. down to, I don't know what this is, eight, um, three or four. And also I have some tiny ones, tiny, tiny, tiny ones. When I, when I like, that guy's face, when I want to really indicate his glasses or where his eyebrows are or where the shadow of his mouth and nose, just something really subtle. But I use a really s- small, tiny little brush for that. I've gotten into doing that a little more often. I like that. Another question, Phil. Um, what could, could you summarize the color for us? Like what, what on your palette? And uh, when you put it on the over there, because we could not hear everything you said, but um, could you just summarize a little bit the warm, the cold? Yeah, sure. Okay, so my palette is called for some reason it's called the, the Rubens palette. I don't know why it's called the Rubens palette. I learned it from somebody I studied with in Denver uh, 25, 30 years ago, uh, Mark Daly great artist, really was great influence on me, real colorist. Um, and anyway, so I've made some changes to it, but basically it's, I have yellow ochre, cad red light, cad orange. Uh, I have an equivalent to cad red light. It's it's called fire red. And it's, it's a color that this company in California, I told you about, they make it. And I've been using it for years and I can get the same effects with a much less expensive paint called Fire Red than I can with um, uh, Cad Red Light or Cad Red Medium. And then I go what, on to Quinn. Hmm? What company? What company are you talking about? It's called Tricoat, T R I C O A T. And the, they have an oil painting division. They do a lot of paint manufacturing, but one division is artist paints. And those are called classic oils, classic, C-L-A-S-S-I-C. But they have, they're great because they have the, um, the what do you call it? the corking tubes they come in. I mean, it's amazing. 
You have a mm-hmm. corn gun, you have all this paint in there, and it's so economical. Over the, if you like to use a lot of paint, like I do, it's 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 important. They also have smaller tubes. They have the uh, four ounce tubes. They have acrylic. I think they have acrylics as well. Uh, I don't think they have watercolors. They're out in California, and um, their paint quality is is really really good. I've only had two issues with them in the fifteen years I've been using them. One batch of white they sent never dried, so the mistake they made, and they 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 made good on that. And then just recently, this platinum violet, which I didn't tell you about yet, it comes out too loose. Something's wrong with it. So they're going to honor that and send me out another one, and I'm going to send this back, and not going to charge me for it. So, fire red, quinacridone, platinum violet, or any violet you want, really. Burnt sienna. Mm-hmm. I have the two phthalos, green and blue, and then black. black um, and how long it takes to dry? Well, depending on the color. I, I mean, the paintings. Uh, I don't know, a couple of days, but fully dry, a week and a half maybe, fully dry. Is there any I can actually of- carry it out and not get it on my clothing, you know, when I'm carrying it someplace, a week and a half. Is there any kind of spray that we can spray for fast and dry? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can get a liquid, L-I-Q-U-I-N. Liquid is um, great, actually. It comes in a different size, uh, small glass container or a larger plastic one. Liquid, all the art supply stores have it everywhere in the world. How, how do you call it? How do you spell it? L- L- L-I-Q-U-I-N, liquid. Oh. And you, you, you mix that a as- little bit with your paint and your paint will dry within three days, oh, two or three really? days. Oh, wow. And the trips that I used to, that I organize overseas, I would always recommend them bringing liquid um, <laughs> near the end of the trip. So they make sure that things are as dry as they can before they come back to the States. Liquid's great. They're, they're on the drying agents, but that's, I think that's the most popular really, the mm-hmm. most widely used. Smell is great. If you like the smell of oil paint, you love the smell of liquid. So how do you it, do that? You just uh, brush all the, all the picture with this liquid? No, what I do is I get a little um, container, like a, palette cup uh-huh. and put it put it in there and then take your brush and stick it in there when you have your mixture done uh-huh. you're going to put before you put the paint on the canvas put your brush in the liquid and mix it in with the paint you have and oh, then paint i see I beautiful see. Mm-hmm. actually it's a nice effect too it's it's, it's a shiny um it's a colorful effect when the paint dries using liquid it's very good actually uh-huh uh-huh yeah. thank you yeah. When it's dry, uh, how long would it take to really dry and you can apply varnish on it? Oh, the varnish, um, at least, I, truthfully, th- at least three or four weeks. Okay. I just sold a painting to a guy, a neighbor actually, but the painting I did was like uh, 10 years ago and I just varnished it for him. So 10 years, 10 years is plenty. <laughs> but if you don't have... <laughs> You don't have to wait 10 years. You could do it in, um, you know, a month. I would say a month, especially if it's not thick. If the paint's not thick, you could probably do it in two or three weeks. Mm. If it's thick, like what you use, you know, the, usually you paint thick. Uh, how long would it take? Six months? Uh, before I varnish it? Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't try to varnish it before then. I don't know. Maybe, eh, maybe three months. Okay, thank you. I would see, I would give it a touch test. You know, I'd take my glove off and put it, touch the canvas and see if any paint's coming off of my hand. If it's not, then I'll go varnish it. Really, that's a good way to tell rather than exact, an exact time. When you put varnish, do you put anything else besides just pure varnish on top of it? You put any medium? Well, I would, what I did, uh, let's see what I do. I mixed it with a little paint thinner like Gamsol, so like maybe a uh, half and half uh, varnish, a, demar- uh, a varnish for, you know, a, a matte varnish or a gloss varnish, whatever you want. I think I generally use a matte varnish. I don't want it to be too glossy, but um, mm-hmm. I, I might mix it with um, half paint thinner and half 
varnish or a third a third paint thinner and three quarters varnish. You probably probably more like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after varnishing, supposing you think, oh God, I want to change it. What do you do, Phil? Well, you could. You could just paint over it, really, if you want. Varnish won't hold. Uh, I mean, won't be like uh, refusing to take the paint. What? I mean, the varnish won't. Uh, will take the paint. Another coat of paint. No, no. I, I think it'd be. I think it'd be fine. Really, I don't okay. see any problem with that. Okay. Really, you, oil paintings. You can get away with murder. I mean, you could run over them with a with a with a mm -hmm. steamroller and take them out in the rain and uh, they they survive they're well maybe not quite a steamroller but you know they survive and they're they're durable that's why i like them but th with the varnish you got to be careful I mean, if you varnish your painting don't leave it in your house let it dry outside someplace because mm -hmm. it, it could smell up the whole house mm -hmm. as i found out i get yelled at and i get thrown <laughs> out of the house yeah, but no, we have to, thrown out of the house with the painting, you know. We have to be very careful with the dust, you know. The what? Dust, dust that you have inside. Dust. inside. Right. Yeah. How can you uh, brighten the picture, make the colors more bright and and vivid after it's finished? After it's finished. Well, I mean, you could varnish it and that'll bring color out again, or you could really start by using brighter colors and stronger colors. Like this, it's not so much about bright color. If you go to my website and see the um, paintings, of, I have a, a lot of painting, different categories of paintings. The Greenwich Village paintings, what I call the action paintings, which are movement like Civil War pictures or um, Custer's Last Stand, for example. And then I have all these portraits, including self-portraits. And the colors are all a lot brighter in those than in this, because this is a night scene. Everything's more subdued. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I just started doing this like a couple of weeks ago, night scenes. Never done them before. And I've had a, some success with two out of three. And one is, uh, I don't know about it, but the other two I like, simple, and they work. Uh, and they're simple, but they, they don't have that brightness. I would, even with this, I would try to find a place to put some bright notes in here. Mm -hmm. In his face, and his hair, and his clothing, maybe. I would bring out more color. I would definitely bring out more color on this figure. On this figure. I'd make it more intense. I, I would do that. That's probably what I do when I work on it. Mm -hmm. This is just getting started. Do you have green in your palette? Green? Yeah. Um, phthalo green. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like phthalo green. Not everyone likes it. I think more people use viridian or uh, sap green. Um, but I, I've tried those, and I just like the intensity that the phthalos mm -hmm. can give you. And because I've done uh, color charts on my own, took many hours to do it, I got to learn how to control those phthalos so they don't overwhelm. I mean, if they get on your clothing, they always do, especially the blues. They get in my arms, my clothing, everywhere. I'm a walking um, paint uh, tube or something anyway, but I'm getting better at that. So yes, I use phthalo green. I like it. And you reduce the intensity by using more, more um, yellow? Yeah, I would reduce it any number of ways. I put a little white in it. I put some yellow, some, I mix it with red, because that'd be a gray, you know, red, Red and green would make a gray, and you could you could uh, lighten up that gray by putting a little more white in that mixture. There are a lot of things you could do. If you take two colors and mix them together, like blue and blue and orange, the complements are red and green, or yellow and violet, and you mix them together in equal amounts, and then you put a little white in it, see what that does, and then put a little more white in it and see what that does, and maybe adjust the amount of either of those two colors and see what that does. There's a lot of possibilities. That's why color charts are really uh, great. If you have 10 hours to do them and the inclination there, it's a great exercise, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Have you tried acrylic? What? Acrylic? Have you tried acrylic? 
I tried uh, acrylic, but you know, I don't never liked the great. I mean, I've seen great acrylic paintings, but I never liked the fact that uh, they dry so fast and it's so much easier to make a correction. You saw, I mean, I, I took my rag and I will paint it and I rubbed out an area, boom, brought it right back to the white canvas so I could paint over it again. With, with acrylic, you kind of have to, if you don't, if you don't stay on top of it, you have to then paint on top of what you put down. Um, it, it never worked. It never, it never suited me. It suits a lot of people. I, actually, I know people whose work I love who do nothing but acrylics. Thank you. Any other questions? I have no questions, but I have a comment. Go for um, it. Bill, thank you very much. I'm not a painter and I just, I don't have that skill, but the way you went from a blank canvas to putting the figures in and bringing, bringing them out is just amazing to me. It's just awesome. Well, thanks, Kathleen. I mean, it's only 35 years of doing it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and innumerable failures. You, artists never talk about their failures, right? Yeah, right. forget it. I got. I, I hate to say this, but I like to say my biggest corporate collector is the New York Sanitation Department. <laughs> they have a dumpster out back there. If I don't like a painting, if I don't want to sand it down and reuse it, I throw it away. I mean, I, I rarely do that anymore because I'm I'm getting better at what I do. But I, I have thrown a lot of paintings away. Now I'll just sand them down. I'll just sand, take a sanding box, sand them down, and paint a new one on top of it. Saves money. Reassuring to hear. Yeah. <laughs>